Welcome to the new video. In the previous video, we have seen the structure of input and output files. We have also seen how we can make changes right inside those files and run the model again. To compare the model output and observations, model efficiency criteria is used. A commonly used measure of model efficiency in hydrology is the Nash Sutcliffe efficiency. I will show you how it looks. This is the formula for the Nash Sutcliffe efficiency. A satisfactory model has a Nash Sutcliffe efficiency greater than 0.5. A good model has upwards of 0.75. Nash Sutcliffe efficiency values below 0 imply that if you take an average of the observations to estimate output, you are going to have a better prediction than using the model. The Nash Sutcliffe efficiency does not tell you to what extent your model is underestimating or overestimating the observations. For that, you will need to calculate the p bias. The p bias is the deviation of the results from observations expressed as a percentage. An ideal model should have a p bias of 0, 0.0. However, models tend to have a positive p bias, which reflects underestimation of observations, that is, or a negative p-bias which reflects overestimation of the observations. And this is how p-bias is calculated. Let's calculate the Nash Sutcliffe efficiency and the p-bias together. From the previous video, we activated the output of CSV files. This will make it easier for us to have our results in Excel. And the file that we are looking for, channel man sd. Here is the file we are looking for. So we will double click that to open it in Excel. And we will look for the correct column which has flow output for each of the channels. If I scroll to the right, I can find that AV is the column that I'm looking for. So I select all the other columns and Delete them. Up to here. And I'll delete the columns on the right. Very good. Next, we will filter out all the results for the other channels and only remain with the results for the channel that is the main output. Just to be sure, let's check what channel is the main output channel. For that, I'll go to Chandek, Chandek.com, and look for the one that is going to the sink. It's channel 53. All right, close that, go back to Excel. I will select the heading and go to Home and say filter and then filter. This will allow me to only select channel 53. So I can use this to select everything and then select channel 53. There you go. And my results go from 1992 to 2000. All right, so I have prepared another Excel where I've pasted the formulas and we're going to use that to calculate the Nash Sutcliffe efficiency and the p-bias. Now, I will copy this, control shift down, copy, and go back to the other Excel. I will paste it, I will paste it here. And this starts in 1992, 1 forward slash, 1 forward slash, 1992. Remember, these are monthly results. So if I drag this, it's going to be changing the day. How do I know this? If I continue, it's going to 16 all the way. But what I want is monthly change. So I will change this to 2 and change this to 1, making the difference between this and this a month and then I will double tap. I see that it goes to 12 and then restarts at one in the next year. 
So this is what I want. Next, I will put observations in this column. So I will have date, observed, and simulated. Okay, so I will open where my observations are. You can easily have this set up by just opening the file that you saved when you were visualizing. This should have both already imported. Let me just show you this. See, this is the observed flow. This is the simulated flow. And it's starting in 1993. So to make it easier, I'll just get results from 1993 from observed. If you want, you can go to the file and extract it there again. So I will just start in 1993 and I will get rid of everything within this period. And I will have to move my formulas there. Okay. Fine. Now I can double tap this to make it automatically fill the rest. Uh oh, I should do it like this. Okay. 12. And then it goes to 12 again and all the way up to the end, which is 1997, remember. So for the simulations, we don't need this part. We remove that part. We can easily plot this just to see and make a plot that is the same as the one that we already made in the visualization. Here's the plot or using the other design of a chart, you can use this. And here is how it looks. Okay, let's calculate the Nash Sutcliffe efficiency and the p-bias for this time series. I will delete that, or if you want, you can keep it somewhere. I'll just keep it maybe somewhere there. So I have a graphical view and also a view of the statistics. All right, so you will see that you will need to have for this fraction, a numerator and the denominator calculated separately, you divide them and subtract from one. And that's what we will do. We'll create a column for the numerator or the values for all the time steps. And then we'll sum that, have the total for all the time steps. Then we'll do the same for the denominator and then subtract from one. Okay, so first I will create QM minus QO, not Q0. Okay, I'll make it O. And then this to the power 2. That's the name of the column. And um, let me put the open bracket. And we'll do the same. Another column. So I'm just being lazy here. Actually, this is supposed to be squared. And this is the mean so this is uh, the mean of the observed flows so i will say q m o i will say q or o m just to make sure that it's a bit different okay so this is mean of the observed and then this is q o okay so now we start by filling here we say equal to the modeled flow, which is the simulated minus, I will start with the bracket just so that I make it easier, minus the observed flow here, close that to the power two. Okay, there we've got our value. We do the same here. It's equal to observed, which is now here, Okay, start with uh, open bracket minus the mean. So we will have to calculate the mean of all these observations. We'll put the mean in B2. So we say that, but we'll apply this mean to everything else. So I'll put, I'll press F4, or you can put the dollar signs. And I will close that and say to the power two. Okay, so we have to calculate the mean here is equal to average of all the observations. 
and to go all the way to the back you can see the shortcut on the screen Control shift down arrow and then i will close at the end press enter now we have got our average for observations and it's already subtracted by that the reason we fix our cell is because we don't want to re-enter every time we want to drag it like this and then the next formula already refers to the same cell okay now i will just put one here in order to be lazy you will see what i mean because without this one if i double tap here nothing happens so i'll put one in order to connect this these columns to the already uh, filled columns and now if i do this it will fill all the way up to where these columns end so now i can just select this column and get rid of the numbers i have my columns in the formula for nice Sutcliffe efficiency we need to sum the numerator so this is the average uh, i'll say um, average okay and then i will say sum so well we don't have to calculate the sum for this but we need to calculate the sum for this so it's equal to sum select all of this okay press enter and this is the sum if i drag to the right it's also summing these values all right and finally the nse NSE, I will put it here. Okay, NSE is equal to go to the next cell equals one minus and then the numerator, which is this, divided by the denominator, which is that, and then we get zero point four five. That's the Nash Sutcliffe for this period 1993 to 1997 now for the p bias we will need to sum all the observed as we can see here and hence i can just copy this formula to here control v now i have already summed them and um, we also need to calculate a new column which is observed minus modeled and then you sum all of that multiplied by 100 so a new column becomes open bracket observed q o minus q m close okay so we say is equal to observed minus modeled or simulated okay so I will also use the same trick as before. Just put a, a number there and then we can get rid of it afterwards. We will need to sum all of this. So to copy the formula, paste it here. And then this is the, the, uh, the whole sum. And uh, we say P bias is equal to equals the summation multiplied by 100 the summation multiplied by 100 divided by the sum of all the of the observed and there it is so the p bias is negative 17 percent this is in percent because it's multiplied by 100 which which tells me that our model is overestimating in general now some of you might be wondering is this the value that we got for nse in the previous case well i made some changes to the model before and also it depends on the period that you have checked the nash sutcliffe efficiency for however let me do a quick check We see that if we visualize, even using 
the visualized to, we get the same Nash Sutcliffe efficiency, 0 0.45, 0 0.45. Now, if you are working on a different case, or if you are doing this at the daily time step, your Nash Sutcliffe efficiency might not be so high. Normally, it's below zero, which means the average of your observations is better than your model. In those cases, you might want to do some calibration. And I will talk about manual calibration in the next video. For now, you might want to check the water balance of your model. And how to do this? You can do that by analyzing the annual average water balance basin file. And to check the water balance, you can look at it from the soil profile point of view. The water balance considers the different amounts of water in the long run. For instance, the change of the amount of water inside the soil should be almost equal to zero. This means the amount of water that falls as precipitation in the watershed should be the same as the surface runoff evapotranspiration loss, percolation loss, and the flow within the soil all the way to the river combined. Let's see how we can do this in an Excel. Let's go to text in out folder. Okay, we find that here. And we look for the file basin and new average. So basin and your average water balance. So you can open the Excel one or you can open the text in the text file. So this is the text file. And according to our uh, check, precipitation minus all of these should almost be equal to zero. So I'll put precipitation. I'll make an Excel file here. Water balance check. Water balance check and then I'll put precipitation as incoming and how much is the precipitation is this much so what are you losing so on the loss side um, we have surface runoff. And then we have ET. And then we have percolation. Let me first of all fill the numbers for this. Um, percolation. Vapor question is ET and surface runoff. What's the surface runoff? This is the amount of water that is flowing to the channel from the uh, uh, from the lateral flow. Is this one okay? Okay, so let me add all the losses and uh, compare to the to the gains. So this is sum oh, is equal to sum of all of all of these, and then uh, we compare these to these, and we see if we calculate uh, the 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 difference between the two, we find that there is a very small difference is equal to that minus that and that's a very very small difference and we can see that the water balance is quite fine all right in the next video we will look at how we can do a manual calibration of our model basically how we can change parameters